Are you saying I'm stupid? Yes! <laughs> One of the biggest traditions in Pixar history is Easter eggs in general and Easter eggs that tease future projects. And spotting them really satisfies me. Pixar and Disney have cemented themselves as the power couple in the world of animation, delivering absolute bangers like Toy Story, Monsters, Inc., and Finding Nemo. Childhood classics, baby. Each film has a sprinkle of fantasy and is absolutely peanut butter and jam-packed with hidden details referencing pop culture, past films, and future entries. Since 2013, Pixar has included at least one Easter egg linking each movie to the next one, not even including the classic Easter eggs that are present. What's interesting is that most of these Easter eggs only make sense after the eventual release of the teased movie. These Easter eggs can be subtle, like a background detail referencing a character or object from a future movie, or they can be more obvious. They often come up so quickly that they're easy to miss or might be so ordinary you wouldn't think anything of it. That being said, let's take a gander at some of the Easter eggs that teased a future film and some other famous Pixar Easter eggs. I'm Joey C. Let's go. But I don't want to use my hands. Oh. <laughs> let's take a look at the classic that is Monsters, Inc. The debut of Sully and Mike Wazowski included three Pixar Easter eggs geared towards the next film, Finding Nemo. The first one is at Harryhausen's, the food joint where the mural behind the chef features a clownfish. And if you don't know, the clownfish is Finding Nemo, baby. The second one is a model of Nemo hanging in the room of the trailer where Randall is banished. It appears quickly, so don't miss it. Finally, when Sully returns the wonderful Boo back home, she shows him all of her toys. It's very cute. One of those toys is a clownfish. Put that thing back where it came from, or so help me. Get that thing away from me, you guys! Moving on to Finding Nemo, this classic has a fantastic tease to The Incredibles, but it's not underwater. In the scene where the dentist is about to be attacked by Nigel, the scary flying pal with Marlin hiding in his mouth, there's a kid in the waiting room who is shocked by all the craziness happening in the room. But the kid is reading a comic book, which so happens to be a Mr. Incredible story, and it seems to be from the days where he was still working by himself considering he's wearing a blue shirt. Also, bonus easter egg. Finding Nemo features a blink and you'll miss a Cars reference. At the end of the movie, Luigi can be seen driving past the group of fish while they escape the dentist office in their plastic bags. But of course, the car was not alive. Speaking of The Incredibles, the film includes an Easter egg for Cars, the next film, in the shape of Doc Hudson casually parked in Metroville. Doc can be spotted during the final battle between the Parr family and Syndrome. And just like Luigi in Finding Nemo, this version is just a regular car. Although, side note, Cars doesn't have a known reference that teased Ratatouille, so it's the one exception to the Pixar tradition. Okay, ooh, well, so you want to do it the hard way, huh? Don't even think about it, cowboy. Transitioning to Ratatouille, this film went back to the Pixar Easter egg tradition after Cars missed the boat on that one. Or missed the car on that one. <laughs> Ratatouille features two different Wall-E references. One is very subtle, and the other one is in the short film Your Friend the Rat, included in the special features in the home release. The first one is Wall-E's cockroach companion Hal, seen on the wall in Linguini's house. In the short film Your Friend the Rat, Wall-E himself shows up as the driver of a vehicle on Mars. On top of that, in the apartment Remy wanders through, he comes across to Up's Doug, whose shadow can be seen on the wall. Boy, these Easter eggs run deep. It's like a Marvel movie. Let's jump around a bit to Toy Story 3, which I feel is under-discussed next to the other three Toy Story movies. This movie features two Easter eggs to Cars 2. One can be spotted in Andy's room, which is a Finn McMissile poster, a character that was supposed to debut in the first Cars movie, but showed up in the sequel. The second Easter egg appears at Sunnyside Daycare, and it's a Lightning McQueen toy. Very appropriate for the children. Since Cars skipped the Pixar tradition, Cars 2 had to make up for it. At the Yee Turn Left Inn in London, there's a tapestry hanging on the wall, showing a car version of the Don Brock family. Or in other words, the carified versions of Merida and her parents and her triplet brothers, the characters from the Pixar movie Brave. If other movies can have the regular versions of the characters from Cars, Cars can definitely have the car equivalent of human characters. It all makes sense. 
Moving on to Pixar's next release, Brave, we see an easter egg that kickstarted many theories and is part of the Pixar movie universe theory, which is a popular fan theory that explains that every movie of Pixar's exists in the same universe. In Brave at the Witch Hut, there's a wood carving of Sully from Monsters, Inc., who returns in Monsters University. This has made many fans believe that the witch is in fact Boo, who managed to travel through time looking for her monster friend Sully. It certainly makes the Pixar movie universe theory more interesting. In Finding Dory, when Hank and Dory escape from the Marine Life Institute, a Cars 3 easter egg can be found when Hank lands on the truck. A fish lands on a truck. It's a long story. Anyways, pay close attention to the driver, who happens to be wearing a Lightning McQueen band-aid. And it's not a regular version of Lightning McQueen. His facial expressions can be seen when zooming in. Maybe the actual cars exist on this side of the Pixar universe. You're mocking me, aren't you? Oh, no, 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 no. Buzz, look, an alien! <laughs> Driving into Cars 3, we see the continued tradition by adding two wonderful Coco Easter eggs. One is the image Cruz Ramirez displays to motivate a homesick trainee, which so happens to be Santa Cecilia. Another one is Miguel's guitar, which can be seen hanging on the wall behind the band playing at the Cotter Pin Bar at Thomasville. Coco's Easter egg referencing Incredibles 2 did not happen in the Land of the Living. When Miguel and Hector are on their way to the talent show in the Land of the Dead, an Incredibles poster can be spotted on the wall. Of course, because this is the Land of the Dead, the poster is a Sugar Skull version of the Parr family. Very simple, very cool. Just like The Good Dinosaur, a classic film, did with Finding Dory's Hank, More on that later. Incredibles 2 had an easter egg reference to a new character from Toy Story 4, which wasn't easily found at first. In Jack-Jack's playpen, he is a Duke Kaboom action figure, in the crib on the lower left part of the screen casually laying down. Toy Story 4 features a very interesting onward easter egg that had many fans scratching their heads. At the fair, there's a bouncy castle that can be seen a couple of times throughout the movie, especially at the end. The castle has a pegasus on top of the structure that looks very similar to the mural on the side of Barley's beloved van, Guinevere. Because Onward is set in a fantasy world with all types of mythical creatures, it has no connection with Toy Story, so it needed to be subtle and tasteful. Although, how are toys coming to life not set in a fantasy world? Makes no sense. <laughs> Taking a look at Luca, we can see that Luca alludes to Turning Red, the next Pixar film. In a blink and you'll miss it moment, in Julia's bedroom, along all the other various school books and pictures she shows to Luca, there's a record label with the words Four Villaggi, which translates to Four Villages. The name and logo are extremely similar to Malin's favorite band in Turning Red, named Four Town. Enough that it definitely counts as an easter egg. And hell, maybe they were still early enough in development that Four Town was originally called Four Villages. I have no idea. I'm sorry, are we back? Oh, all right girls, lovely talking with you. Turning Red has been met with plenty of unfair criticism, and we quite enjoyed the film. And it is an excellent addition to Pixar's collection of animated films. Like any good Pixar movie, it references the next project, which was Lightyear, with a sneaky image. As with Luca, Turning Red's Lightyear Easter egg is very easy to miss. When Malin and her friends are walking on the street, on the bottom of Miriam's skateboard, there are two stickers that reference Lightyear. We see Socks the Robot Cat, who is Buzz's cat companion in the movie, and we also see see the Space Ranger logo synonymous with Buzz Lightyear. I wonder what Easter eggs Lightyear holds for the next film. Jumping back a bit to Soul, a fantastic and powerful Pixar film, Soul features a brief Easter egg nodding towards its Pixar successor, Luca, in the form of a poster that Joe and 22 pass while they're running through the streets of a city that never sleeps, New York City. The travel agency window advertises Puerto Rosso, the small town in the Italian Riviera where Luca takes place. Soul's Luca Easter egg is especially clear since the name Puerto Rosso is so prominent in Luca. Space Ranger. The word I'm searching for, I can't say because there's preschool toys present. Traveling to Wally, I'm trying to mix up the order a little bit. I gotta keep you on the edge of your seats, man. Wally spent a big part of his life surrounded by trash. And among all the objects he keeps in his wonderful home is one that belonged to Carl Fredrickson, the protagonist of Pixar's movie Up. 
His walking sticks with tennis balls attached to the feet can be spotted when he prepares to watch Hello Dolly. And later, when he falls down from the ceiling of his truck, he collides with the walker. Very subtle, a very cool. I am Mrs. Nesbitt. <laughs> Snap out of it, Buzz! Perhaps one of the easiest Pixar Easter eggs to find is the Toy Story 3 one and up. When Mr. Fredrickson's house begins to float, it flies past the little girl's room, in which a Lotso hugging bear can be seen. Whether it's the same Lotso that made life more difficult for Woody, Buzz, and the rest of the gang in Toy Story 3, or a different one, and probably not evil, is unknown, but you can see it casually sitting next to the girl's bed. When Onward came out, many Pixar fans were trying to find the Easter egg that teased the studio's next movie, Soul. The reference was confirmed by director Dan Scanlon. Onward's Soul Easter egg becomes visible when a Centaur police officer, Colt Bronco, knocks over Barley's role-playing game. Some of the Lightfoot family albums appear in the shot, among which is a Dorothea Williams record. The very same jazz superstar who appeared in Soul, Dorothea Williams is a jazz performer voiced by Angela Bass who knows no limit in the Pixar universe as her work also showed up in Onward. You are a toy! Earlier in the video, we mentioned The Good Dinosaur, a rather underrated Pixar movie. It was followed by Finding Dory, and the Easter egg teasing the Finding Nemo sequel was all about a new character. When Carlo is learning how to swim, Hank the octopus can be seen at the bottom of the water. Hank became Dory's friend and helped her escape so that she could keep looking for her family. And by the time The Good Dinosaur came out, Hank was still unknown to the public. Speaking of hidden connections in Pixar movies, probably the most famous and dominant one is the A113 Easter Egg. If you don't know what the A113 Easter Egg is, allow me to show you my video turning red every Pixar Easter Egg you missed. Ah, the famous A113 Easter Egg. We were waiting for this one. If you don't know, this A113 is a famous Easter Egg that is featured in every single Pixar film. It is a reference to the classroom number of the students at the California Institute of the Arts, many of them not working at Pixar. Follow your dreams, kids. This number can be seen in a number of different spots in the film, one including on the chalker, which is a line marker labeled as Professional Model A113, when the characters are trying to perform the ritual on Malin's mom's red panda, spoiler, in the Sky Dome. So now that we've reviewed that, let's go into a few major ones. The first movie where Pixar used this famous Easter egg was in Toy Story, which happens to be the license plate number for Andy's mom's van, and there are a few shots in the movie where we can see it up close and clear. In The Bugs Life, when Flick leaves the ant colony and arrives in Bug City, A113 can be seen on a cardboard box in the background. Finding Nemo features this famous number on the scuba diver's camera when the fish get their picture taken during the field trip scene. In The Incredibles, on the control room computer screen, Elastigirl finds out that Mr. Incredible is kept away on level A1 and in cell 13. Very sneaky. Let's move on. Hey, hey, careful, man. There's a beverage here, huh? Another famous connection in the Pixar movies is the appearance of the Pizza Planet truck from the original Toy Story movie. And there are a lot of them. Maybe we'll make a whole video about it one day. We'll go over a few major ones here. In Cars, the carified version of the Pizza Planet truck can be seen in the background throughout numerous scenes, usually as a race spectator, not a delivery vehicle. In Wall-E, as Eve is scanning for signs of life over the wastelands of the planet, we see a familiar wrecked car covered in decay. It's the classic pizza truck, baby. Very easy to spot. Previously, we discussed a scene in Brave where we can see a carving of Sully in the witch's house. But you know what other carvings we can also see? The Pizza Planet truck on the table, baby. Boom. During Monsters University, one might spot a familiar truck making a delivery to one of the campus dorm houses. Every frat house needs a pizza, man. One that I never noticed was the Ratatouille one because it's very hard to spot. During the scene where Chef Skinner is chasing Remy, they pass a bridge over a river and you'll never guess what's on that bridge. The Pizza Planet truck. God, this Pizza Planet truck excites me. Good lord, the connections that are available to us in the Pixar universe are deep and significant, and probably prove the theory true that all the Pixar movies are connected. 
The theory is true, baby. We figured it out. Revenge is not an idea we promote on my planet. Ladies and gentlemen, you made it to the end of the video. Hidden connections in Pixar. What was your favorite hidden connection? Did you notice any that we didn't? If so, let us know in the comments below. And as always, everybody, thanks for watching.